Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rum and a Couch video number 73. Dave here from Manchester Rum Festival and for this episode I'm going to be heading over to Central America. Reason why? At Manchester Rum Festival a handful of weeks ago, these guys, Ronnie Zalco, made their long-awaited debut. Um, originally signed up as you'd expect for 2020 and I actually met Kartik, uh, who is the owner of Ronnie Zalco at Leeds Rum Fest, um, run by some good friends of mine as well. Um, I was very, very impressed because he just had a 10 year out. But since then, in those 511 days between what should have happened at Rum Fest and one did, it did happen, he'd also brought out a 15 year blend as well. So I've been very, very intrigued to try the 15 because the 10 I've had, and to be fair, about, well, over two years ago now, uh, and the 15 I've never had. So I picked up some bottles because the response it seems to have had at Rumfest really, really um, was very, very pleasing for me because a new brand's always a little bit, are people are going to understand it? Are people going to appreciate the flavours? Especially with Central America, because here in the UK, uh, well, especially here in Manchester, there's not many brands who are focusing on a Central American profile. Most of it's Caribbean, most of it's South America, um, but this one, it's, it's a blend of different styles. Um, or sorry, different countries, but there is one for the 15 year that surprised me for the style that is added to it. We'll come on to that a little bit later, but to give you an idea, this one, the 10, is 43% ABV. This one, the 15, is 55.3. So I'm very much looking forward to giving these a go. So they are completely unopened, so let's crack them on now. So Izalco itself is actually an active volcano in El Salvador. So it's got a bit of a, oh, I love that noise. Nice little hark back to, uh, well, to be fair, you can see it on the label as well, actually. That's pretty cool to see. So like I say, it says a blend of Central American style rums aged 10 years. 43% uh, ABV, it's got some great gold medals on there. Uh, San Francisco, International Spirits Challenge, Spirits Business as well. So that's always good to see. It's got some tasty notes on the back. I don't want to read them in case I'm influenced by what I pick up. Let's get a hefty measure going. Okay, so 10 year, as I say, 43% ABV as well. Pour into my uh, grand can. And automatically I'm getting that kind of woody fruit note. A little bit of raisin. Little bit of what is that? Weirdly, marshmallow, but it's very, very fresh. It's sort of like it's um, it's really bumping up every time you bring your nose to it. It's like it's fresh air coming out, like an aircon machine. That's interesting, but definitely it's that sort of it's it's oaky. There's a blend, it doesn't actually say what the blend is on this one. I've not been able to find out. I'm hoping maybe Carty could be able to give us an answer and then uh, I'll be able to put it in the comments of wherever you're watching this video. There's not a lot to the nose, but there's definitely something there. I'm hoping it maybe opens up a bit more of the palette and my light bulb moment start to go off. So let's give it a go. God, that's smooth. Wow. Actually quite thick as well. Not to like a, a sugar syrup thickness, but there's a lot of blend offering that real tobacco, vanilla, caramel. There is fudge in there as well. A little bit of cocoa, cocoa nib, I'd say. The marshmallow sort of um, texture. But not to the point of it's sickly sweet. It's not like you've, you've just added lots of sugar and got something out there. This is actually a nice blend of those more traditional flavors. I think a lot of people expect rum to taste like. There's a hint of sort of raisin style fruit, which I think is what I'm picking up on the nose. It's moved on to that palette, but it lingers. Not too much. More lingers with the sort of um, vanilla syrup sort of profile. I like that. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. And to be fair, it does remind me. 
of that first time I tried it at Leeds Rum Fest itself as well. So that's always a good sign. Okay, that's a good start. 43%. I wouldn't have said it was 43, to be honest with you. But maybe 40 would have dulled it down a little bit more and maybe I could see why. Anyway, so cash strength. 55.3%. Now, I've done a little bit of research on this one and what came up... Pardon me. <laughs> one of is getting to me already. I wrote it down here because it's a minimum of 15 years and it's a blend of Nicaragua, Guatemala, Panama, Costa Rica and Guyana. Now, Guyana is a bit of a curveball because in my mind, Guyana is South America. But that doesn't necessarily mean that out of the blend ratio, Guyana is going to be near the top of that, if not the top. I think he may have put it in there just to give it a bit of, bit of body, perhaps. Because in my mind, Central American rums are a little bit lighter. I won't say a little bit thinner. They've still got a bit of body to it. But the kind of flor de canias of the Nicaragua world, the kind of guadabrellos uh, uh, from Panama, they are very, very good, but in my mind, a little bit more of a mixer profile. There's some good high-end stuff in there, but it's a shame it doesn't get as much focus. And I think it's because it lacks a bit of that sort of pot still uh, depth that, say, Jamaica's offers, um, or even that sort of versatility with the profiles of the fruitiness that St. Lucian and Barbadian and Trinidadian can offer as well. But anyway, let's see what this is all about. So this is generally my first time trying this. I've been quite looking forward to it, especially being... Cast strength as well. So a minimum of 15 years with this one. So there could be much, much higher in here as well. A lot brighter, a lot more fruitier as well. A lot lighter style of fruit, it's nothing too heavy, but there's definitely uh, a more, a more breezier sort of aroma compared to the 10. Again, you still get a kind of oomph of freshness as well. Really hits your nose. I get a little bit of orange, a little bit of papaya comes through. Definitely some wood. Not as intense as the 10 for the oak style, but there's definitely some wood there. There is something else as well. Sort of like a eucalyptus. Very, very small amount, but there's a eucalyptus sort of thing, which I think is what offers that sort of bump for the freshness into your nose. All right, let's give this a go. Well, I wouldn't have said that was 55.3, uh, was it? Yeah. I would have said that was a little bit less, but a lot thinner. Still a thickness, but there's a lot thinner compared to the 10. Really opens up. It's sort of right down the center of your tongue. It's nothing on the sides, something on the back of your throat. Weirdly, nothing really comes to mind straight away. There's definitely some things there, but it's not, no light bulb. Honey. You kind of get that sort of honey, um, honey water heading into a syrup style. It's kind of like, um, Again, it's, it's like eucalyptus. It's, it's a real freshness. It's like you, you've just eaten a polo mint or a Tic Tac, you know, something quite small. Again, it's just releasing just a little bit every time. It's definitely some honey. It's got a real silkiness coming through. It's not as thick as the 10, but it's still a smooth profile. I can see why this had a great response at Runfest. Weirdly, I also am thinking it's sort of that sh virgin sugarcane honey profile as well. I tried a little bit. I've, I've got a bottle somewhere in the house there from St. Nicholas Abbey in Barbados. When you try that, it's it's like having a, look, this basically honey molasses. In my mind, it's very, very thin. Yet you still get the intensity, but you, you get it more of a, a rounded approach to what molasses really is. I'm kind of getting that profile. It's sort of, it's a real sort of milk chocolate sort of coating the side of my mouth as well. I really wouldn't have said that was 55.3% though. Doesn't feel it. I mean, there's some fantastic cash cream from's out there. 
that would involve more of an intense sort of uh, kick, but this isn't one of them. And that's probably a good thing. It really maybe gets people on board with what cash drone froms are all about. <coughs> Pardon me. And the good thing is, from a Central American focused brand, I wouldn't have said Guyana was in that. If I did a blind tasting, a Guyanese style of rum is not present in there. I think there's a little bit out of the five blends that'd be right at the bottom, just propping up, maybe just offering that sort of base towards it. And then everything else is layered up on top. I like that. That's a really good show. I'll tell you what, though. Two things I haven't come to mind is how to enjoy it when it's not on its own. No cocktails are sort of thought, probably really good. Um, you know, in, in, in like a, well, old fashioned, to be fair, that would work really well in old fashioned. Both of them would, but it didn't come straight to my mind. And I think that's good. On the odd occasion, it's not the end of the world. If you're thinking, I could just drink this on its own. And I could, and I probably have, I will. Uh, these are not going anywhere anytime soon. But um, it's interesting because in my mind, the amount of different cocktails I try in different venues, there's always something that can remind you or uh, you, know, you can replace and represent with something a little bit different. But nothing comes to mind. And that's, like I say, not a bad thing. I think on the other occasion, you can get yourself a really nice rum where you don't have to mix it. I know the 15 year, I think he's I think 60, 70 pound recommended retail price for what I had a quick look at. Um, so, I mean, maybe in hindsight, it's not one to mix anyway. But then again, you can mix whatever you wish. Uh, I'm not one for saying that you can't have cola with this. It could probably make a really good rum and coke. But... I can also understand the fact that people would not want to uh, do that justice just in case, God forbid, it doesn't work. But I generally think it probably would. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is Ron Can We just tried the 10. We just tried the 15 cast strength as well. Give you guys a follow on their social media. Pick up a bottle from the likes of Tipples and Manchester and Aston's and Manchester if you're local. If you're not local to Manchester, maybe head out to likes of Master Malt, Drink Shop, Whiskey Exchange, Royal Mount Whiskies, Whiskey Online. So many places these days where you can pick up some amazing bottles of rum. So do shop around, see where you can pick up uh, as, as quickly as you can because this is something I can, I can see why. It had a really good response at Manchester Rum Festival a handful of weeks ago. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for um, joining us. If you're not already subscribing, why aren't you? Come on, I'm, not, I'm, I'm pretty good, surely. But give us a subscribe on YouTube, give the page a like on Facebook, and give us a follow on Instagram. And I will see you all very, very soon for the next Rum on the Couch.